Hey guys, it's me, John Avenger, once again, and welcome to another 2000s movie month. And this is a 2008 movie that scared the crap out of me. I saw it in January. It came out around the same time as uh, as uh, the um, Rambo 4 film, which came out the same month, but it was freezing when I saw this. And that is Cloverfield. Now, before I review this, I know who produced this, and I have to say this. Uh, I'll let uh, Doug Walker say it better than I could. Technically, see this film. Thank you. He said it better than I than I could have ever said it. Screw J.J. Abrams. Just to let that, just I'm gonna just let that go now. Um, this is Cloverfield. It's directed by Matt Reeves. This guy deserves all the credit in the world for this movie. Not that you know that abomination of cinema that that screwed over Star Trek and Star Wars. This movie is pretty damn scary. Like this movie came out before. You know, the 10 Cloverfield Lane movie came out this year, which did not capture the same magic. I know I've heard some mixed things. Some people liked it. Some people hated the ending. But this is the one that set the standard. This movie was so scary when I saw this in the theater. It was one of the first found footage films I ever saw, uh, you know, post uh, Blair Witch Project. I never seen the Blair Witch Project. And I saw this in a crowded theater in Manhattan opening night. And I got my ticket through the machine and... Um, when I went to see this, I did not know what to expect. As soon as it started, I had tension in my stomach. And the moment that New York City gets attacked by the monster, spoiler alert, it's a giant monster attacking New York City. Even the trailer for this movie was brilliant. Like, just the the, the, the freaking scope of the movie, the budget they had, and uh, the fact that they showed the Statue of Liberty's head getting blown off, awesome. It was one of the best teaser trailers of all time. And I really like the cast in this movie. This cast is freaking brilliant. Except for one girl that I'll, I'll talk about. But it, I love the, the the good reviews it has. Scary delivers the squirrels. Yeah. Every time something jumped at me in this movie, I jumped out of my seat. It was so scary. Like, my my, 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 vein, my uh, freaking pulse was racing. A terrific movie filled with spe spectacle and humor. Yeah, T.J. Miller brings the humor in this. A heart-racing experience with plenty of chills and exhilarating... Ration, I agree that all of these reviews are correct. This movie is scary as all hell, and it's it's set to standard for films like, uh, you know, every other horror film that came out after this. You know, Saw, the Saw sequels, and uh, Insidious, and The Conjuring all can take a bow from this because this is what the one that really got it into gear in the late two thousands. But look at this cast. This is the then unknown cast. You have Lizzie Kaplan, this beautiful. Big eye girl that can kick the crap out of Ari Plaza. You got uh, Jessica Lucas. You may have seen her in uh, movies like That Awkward Moment, and she also did a, a small part in Gotham. She was uh, the Thea, the Tigress, in uh, Gotham in season two. You have T.J. Miller, who's a very funny comedian. I like his voice in uh, Big Hero Six. I like him in this movie. He was in Yogi Bear. I didn't care for him in Age of Old, uh, Age of Extinction. Excuse me. But uh, he's a good actor. I do like him. Uh, Michael St Stahl, David. I've never really heard of him, but he's one of the guys in the film. Mike Vogel, who's the lead guy that's, you know, uh, he's the main character looking for his girlfriend. And you got Odette Yusman. Her, eh, I could take her or leave her. She's a marginal actress at best. She's hot in this movie. It's the best thing she's ever done because I did not care for the unborn. But this is an awesome movie. This is scary. Like, if you want a scary movie for Halloween that's not a major franchise like Halloween or Nightmare on Elm Street or Friday the 13th or Saw or Insidious or The Conjuring, see this movie. It is a, one of those forgotten gems that a lot of people could hold this a high regard. It deserves it. I think it's better. 10 Cloverfield Lane will not scare the piss out of me like this thing did because it set the standard. It's an awesome movie. And like I said, like the Nostalgia Critic said, screw J.J. Abrams. All he did was put the money for this. But the director and the writer deserves all the credit. There is There are some problems. Some of the shaky cam does make me sick after a while. Once uh, I'm fine with it in, in the beginning when they're showing the, the, the people in the party. That's fine. They show New York City. I love New York City. You know, uh, it's I've lived here all my life. And, um, you know, it just it, it holds a special place in my heart, even though Manhattan now is a mess. But, you know, it's a New York location. It's very simple. It's not a freaking overcomplicated plot. It's not supernatural. It's a freaking giant monster destroying things. And uh, the special effects look great on the creature. It just it still holds up. Other problems, like I said, Odette Yasmin is marginal. And the ending. 
I'm not a fan of the ending. I'm not going to spoil it. I know the movie's eight years old, but I'm not a fan of the ending. I think it just it, it's so you know just out of left field, and it came it came out uh, at the time where almost every single movie that came after this had to have like a some kind of an ending like this, and it just kind of put us a, left a bad taste in my mouth because the movie's awesome from start to finish. It's very scary and intense when once the creature starts attacking New York. And there's a lot of sequences that are really intense. And the scene in the in the subway tunnels is freaking scary. You see the little creatures, and it's just insane. And the film has blood, so do not show this to any children. It's not R-rated, but it will scare the shit out of them. It scared me, and I was in my 20s when I saw this. And I'm like, wow, damn, man. This movie really, really, ins it, it left an impression. And I finally got it on DVD last year at a yard sale. I'm glad because it's worth every penny. And uh, this is what I'm talking about. This is a kind of horror that I like. This and The Conjuring, you know, horror films with atmosphere and It Follows. Those are films that scare me, not films that are predictable that you know what's going to happen. Films like this. And this is a great film from the 2000s. Bad ending, yeah, but I can rewatch it. I haven't seen it in years. And I want to see this before I see 10 Cloverfield Lane. Because I know it's not the same thing. It's not a, it's not a monster movie. It's aliens. I know. I get it. But... Decent cast, good good scares, good atmosphere. Shaky cam, yeah, you know, I could do that could take it or leave it now. Now I'm not a fan of found footage, but back then it was something, you know, innovative after Blair Witch, almost 10 years later. And uh, the film still holds up. From what I remember, it does, and it still scares me. So that's my review of, of 10 Cloverfield Lane. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you watch it. If you haven't, see it before you see 10 Cloverfield Lane because this one set the standard. I would have rather have a sequel to this instead of 10 Cloverfield Lane. You know, have uh, not the same cast coming back, obviously, because if you see the ending, you'll know what I'm talking about. But uh, either way, thanks for watching, liking, subscribing. I hope you watch Cloverfield. It's definitely worth seeing during the holidays, like Halloween, you know, because it, it's really, really intense. And I'm like, wow. And, uh, you know... If, you, if you're willing to give it a chance, it will do something for you. So thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.